right, y'all. So this week's episode of Queens was given what it was giving. So let's give it what we got. I'm the type of girl you call wifey. Yeah. What does the cat do? So this week's episode picked up where the last week's episode left off. The girls are standing in front of the billboard and they're like, so we really gonna do this thing. Meanwhile, the whole time they doing that, it's somebody in a distance watching them, but we don't know who it is. Then Eric just stumbles up and talks to them. And they're like, why are you all beat up? Girl, what's really tea? Why he trying to explain? Somebody runs up to them and Eric just pow, shoots them down. They're like, oh my goodness, oh my God. And that's the last time we hear about that scene. I I'm trying to figure out, is this gonna be like an Annalise Keaton type of situation and we gonna do a rewind from the first episode to the last because we need to know what the hell going on with that. So then we flash back to 2001 and Heart of Queens. That's gotta be my favorite song thus far. I mean, of course, the Brandy songs. But this song was, I just really liked it. It had a nice little groove to it. It was giving what it came to give. Or was it? Because when Butter Pecan Park came up, Naomi was like, I can't do this, girl. She was barely singing. And then on stage, she had a meltdown. She was like, you guys, we were supposed to be a group. We were not supposed to break up. And, and here we are. I can't do this anymore. The nasty bitches are dead. And drops the mic and leaves. Naomi is out of the group. Naomi leaves the group. And I'm just like, what the fuck? So, I, I bet it got something to do with Eric. So now we are back to present day and we are at Brianna's house. Brianna is about to take husband, I think his name is Jeff, to surgery. I think he, they found the tumor. They about to remove the tumor, whatever. So he, I guess he really do got cancer, girl. So in the meantime, Valeria decides she gonna come over and do her silent and watch the kids. Child, she don't believe it's a tumor. She don't believe it's, she's like, mm, she with me. She, I don't know, I mean, because girl, mm, this mighty convenient. But he does end up having a tumor. The tumor is removed, the surgery is successful, but he has short-term memory loss. Or does he? Like, he don't remember shit, mainly the cheating scandal, but Valeria was like, I don't know, girl, because, you know, I used to fake it all the time, so, mm -mm. He may just be faking it. He may really remember and act like he don't know. But Brianna don't know for sure, so she just gotta roll with the punches. Now while that's going on down to LA, you got Jill down in Montana. She moving and grooving and getting her thrills. Jill the thrill. She got her little mama Sita in the bed, the one she was rapping about. They doing their thing. All of a sudden you hear a clickety clack at the door. Baby, Jill get her shot, girl. She like, what the fuck is going on? It's Darren down to the kitchen fixing some eggs and some grits and some bacon. He like, girl, you know what's tea? You know, I had some time to think. And girl, I love you, you love her, she love you, and I know you love me. So bitch, let's join together and be the power of three. She was like, uh-uh, like girl, mm -mm, that, that's not what I wanna do. Like, I can't hear the dance, and that's it. Like, I love you, but not like that. My future don't include you anymore, Darren. Okay, so you got to go. He told her before he left, he was like, all right, I received this, but I will never stop loving. Was that him that tried to shoot him? I mean, because I don't know if the gunman at the beginning of this episode was aiming for all the girls or Jill in particular, because she was sort of in the middle. So I don't know. That could have been Darren. But I was alarmed when he was like, I will never stop loving you. And then he just left. Like, the people wanted us to hear that. The people wanted us to see that. But you know what the people didn't want to see? That was Jill in church. Because, honey, when she went to go take her, first of all, she was, none of your heart ain't get killed in the church. And they said, greet your neighbor. She went to greet her neighbor, and Whitefish Karen said, mm mm. So Jill was like, mm, that's strange. So then she went up to the bishop. She said, oh, Mr. Priest, oh, Mr. Priest, give me my communion. And he was like, mm mm. -mm. You got to be living holy and righteous, and we don't respect the sin you got going on, sis. So move it along. And she was like, uh uh, oh, hell no. Nah. So she mad about that or whatever. And while that's going on, we see that Lil Muffin is down to the rehab. She trying to be Lil Muffin. And they like, nah, bitch, we need Lauren. All this Lil Muffin shit you got going on, we ain't having it. Okay, in the words of my kids, we are not having it. So, girl, you gonna have to give us, give us the real deal. 
give us us free, okay? Baby Lil Muffin said, no, who gonna be free? It's me. And she broke the fuck out. She said, uh-uh, I'm out of here. I'm out. Remember that episode, that Halloween episode where Pam had ran through the door and it was like this? That's exactly what had happened with Lil Muffin. Muffin said, bitch, I'm out of here. Then we flash back to the late 1990s and we see how Valeria had joined the group because at first it was just the three black girls. But the began was no way in the mix. And then she had came to one of their shows and was like, Eric, these girls are stars, but they never got on well. They need me, okay? What about me? Bitch, I, I'm in here. And I'm, you know, it's more than you. It is more than me. Put Butter Pecan in, we can be a family, okay? And so he was like, all right, girl, I guess, whatever. And she moved and proved. And the girls was like, okay, I guess, I mean, I guess you went there. So they dropped that little nugget to show us, like, it was originally the three girls. And then she came in as an extra. And sometimes you gotta look out because an extra will give you more than what you asking for. Speaking of what I'm asking for, I am getting what my soul requires with Naomi. She is making up with her daughter Jojo and it's beautiful. Like they are having a cute little relationship. You can tell that the effort is being given and the effort is being received, honey. Like I need an effort, baby. And that's that's worth the pride of you. So while the girls are having lunch or whatever, Cameron walks up and then I'm like, oh my God, I can't it's so good to see you, so good to see you. Go ahead, have a seat, go ahead, talk to us. As a matter of fact, you can eat with us. So the waitress comes by and take everybody order. And baby, JoJo and Cameron had ordered the same exact meal the same exact way. It was like no no juices, no sauces, no nothing, extra pickles. And they looked at each other like, bitch, I ain't never met nobody who like food the way I like food. So girl, what's, what's tea? And then it hit me, girl. It ain't Eric who the baby did. It's that goddamn Cameron. Bitch, and that's how Cameron and Naomi got a little piece of storyline this season. So, okay, I see y'all. I see it with a little musical family, producer, rapper, pianist, okay? Little Mozart in the family, girl, I see y'all. So I'm guessing when they were sitting down or whatever, Cameron was like, girl, you a star, 41 or not. You are a star, and I want to give you an opportunity. So come down to my label, girl, and I got something for you. So she goes down to the label, and they like, Naomi, you great. This music is bomb, okay? As a tablecloth, oh, it's dope. But girl, uh-uh. -uh. Okay, you 41, and we got this new Instagram girl who we know could benefit from your writing and your material. So how about you take all of the talent that you have and pour it into this girl right here, and then we can just give you a little cut off of it, and you can live vicariously through her. She's like, oh, hell no. Uh-uh, I'm out of here. Another girl shakes the table. See, in the first episode, it was Brianna, but in this episode, it's Naomi. Naomi had shook the table. She said, bitch, I'm out of here. Uh-uh, this is not what you promised me, Cameron. I'm out. As a matter of fact, fuck music all together, bitch. I am done. We all get back to Brianna's house. Everybody, for some reason, has all ganged up at Brianna's house and your know, husband is recovering, whatever, whatever, whatever. So then Eric had drops by and Eric is like, yo, I got a proposition. Like, I feel like we should take this thing on the road because the BET Awards was cute, but I feel like we can really capitalize on the moment. So I went ahead and booked y'all for a San Diego show. Now, as soon as he said San Diego, everybody was looking around because we don't know this right now, but Back in 2001, some shit had went down to San Diego that they do not want to relive, honey. So every time you say San Diego in reference to the nasty bitches, it's like a little shake and tremor that goes around the room. So everybody was like, mm, girl, I don't know. But then when he started talking about, you know, the logistics, they was like, girl, I'm in. Jill was like, I did reveal myself to the world. Uh, Brianna was like, bitch, I became a of sex all over again, bitch. I need this for, for who I'm becoming, girl. I need this. And they convinced Naomi to do it. She was like, girl, I guess the nasty bitches will live forever. Let's do it. So then we get another flashback, and it's their Cribs episode. I remember them talking about this in the Breakfast Club interview, how, like, it just wasn't what it seemed. And I heard the man say, y'all need to be up out of here by 3 o'clock. So obviously that was not their house. And you could see that the tension was building up in the group. They were not getting along. And we saw the first gay moment that Jill had. It was a production assistant that walked up to her and was like, girl, I see you. And you see me. You went town until tomorrow. So can we? We with it, honey. And Jill was like, bitch, where I come from? We typical behavior. If y'all see a man, and I'm ugh, moving along. So we back at the house. And Jill on the phone with somebody. We hear a long kaboom outside. What's the kaboom? Bitch, Lauren, Lil Muffin, then tried to jump out the window and then fell two stories down trying to get to her motherfucking friends. Girl, that's not why you escaped from rehab. You need to be trying to get back to work. Get back to your life. But you trying to get back to partying? What put you into rehab in the first place? No, ma'am. So her and Jill have a moment. And I'm starting to notice 
Hart and Jill have this secret bond that doesn't include the rest of the girls. Sometimes it's just gonna be Jill and Lauren and they gonna have, oh, girl, I hope she ain't gay. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, you know, they have their little moment and Jill is like, you gotta go back to rehab. And Lauren was like, hell no, cause they want me to be Lauren and I, I'm, no, bitch, I ain't doing it. And they had a tense moment. Like, Jill told Lauren about herself, and Lauren damn sure told Jill about herself. Then they had a moment to decompress, and they was just like, you know what, I'm just afraid. I don't want to be my best self. And they made a promise to each other. If I do what I got to do, you got to do what you got to do. So, at this point, Lauren is deciding to go back to rehab to do what the fuck she got to do to get her mind, body, and spirit together. Nam ya ho, dang and cure. Namaste, bitch. And girl, why they coming to Jesus, we find out that the San Diego show has sold out in, I think, 12 minutes. A whole arena has sold out in 12 minutes. Bitch, y'all are back. Okay? The girls are not selling out arenas these days. They're selling out music halls, honey. Uh, Studio A, Studio B. Like, they're not selling out arenas, girl. So then we flash back again. I love how the show does this to, to kind of explain what we missed out on now that we're here in present day. They explain how Cameron and Naomi came to be. So at first, Naomi and Eric was messing around. And... Eric wanted to be with Naomi, but Naomi was like, uh-uh. Because the moment they find out we messing around, they not going to give me the respect that I so deserve, so no, okay? Plus, I think you still fuck with Butter Pecan because why do Valeria got all this stuff and, and we driving Masa Miatas? Like, I don't understand what's going on with that. And so once he admitted that he still was fooling around with Valeria, she was like, uh-uh. I need I need a healing for my soul. I need sexual healing. So she went to Cameron and got to bumping and the grinding. And boom, we flipped to present day. And we looking at JoJo in the face. So, girl, y'all is basically just telling us what we need to know. Mama is doing her piano and Naomi calls her. And Naomi's just like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Baby, JoJo said, bitch, please. You sacrifice all of this to be a nobody, to be a husband. I gotta believe that you a star girl or I'm gonna have to go back to hating you. So if you don't want me to go back to hating you, bitch, you gotta believe you a star too. She says, you know what you right click. We fall, we Baby, she, when I say they, oh, I wanna say Brandy so bad. When they own me, saying, she basically went back to that executive's house. The one who told her to pour all of who she was into the Instagram girl. She said, no bitch, I'm the star. I've got the voice, Curtis. I've got the voice. Nobody can see her on the record. And she sang Wrecking Ball by Molly Cyrus, and she tore it to the ground. So much so that if y'all pay attention to the background, it was people who had came by and was just like watching, girl. So then we see that shit paid off. Naomi gets the contract she has been dying for for 20 fucking years, but the little clause in the contract says you can't perform with the nasty bitches no more. We're trying to rebrand, and the nasty bitches can't be a part of your goddamn story no more. So she's like, what the? If it's not one thing, it's another. So we don't know what she gonna do at this moment. Or do we? Because the next time we see the girls, they all rehearsing for the San Diego show. And they only giving the same energy she was giving back in 2001. She, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the rest of the crew know what's up. They're like, uh-uh. What's up with you? That She's like, no, I'm good. I'm, mm -hmm. So then it's show day. They back in San Diego in they robes. They get ready to go on stage. No, Naomi. Everybody's calling, everybody's worried what's going on. The crowd is chanting, no Naomi. Where's Naomi? She outside in the car like, bitch, I can't do this. Like, I'm looking at the poster. This is my future, like, girl, I, I don't know if I can do this. So she start, She sees a call from Eric. And that was just like, girl, you know what, fuck this. So she starts the car. Oh, girl, no, you are not about to do, because I mean, what would y'all do in a situation like this? Would y'all stay with the nasty bitches or would y'all go ahead for the solo record that you always been wanting? So that was showtime. Professor Zerlix, Jill the Thrill, Butter Pecan. I'm just like, oh shit. They was like, eh, an explicit lyric. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Let's do that. And then the episode ends with Cameron coming to Naomi's house. He was like, that little bitch is my child, ain't it? Give me the tea. Is that my child? And Naomi was like, oh. Mm -hmm. And then that's the end of the episode, girl. It gave what it gave. Some of the questions that I wanted answered have already been answered, so y'all are getting to it. Y'all are building up the storyline, and I am here for this. Queens comes on every Tuesday at 9 Central on ABC, and y'all need to be checking that shit the fuck out. Again, make sure you guys are liking, commenting, subscribing, and that the notifications are on. Love y'all. Same place, same time.